It is Monday, December 18th. It is, actually today is my anniversary when I was married to my husband who is up in heaven. So, Ron, happy anniversary. Um, he's deceased now four years. And um, I'm sure he's looking down saying, what the hell are you doing now? Because that's always the way it was with him and I. So, happy anniversary up there. I hope you're speaking to my family up there. And today is also Bake Homemade Cookie Day. Did you know that? We have a baker I, here today. <laughs> you did know it. I figured you did. I figured you did. For some reason, I said she must know that it is Baker Cookie Day. And um, we like to do the national days because it's, it's just nice for people to know. Not everybody knows that, and I research that every day. So on my left here, I have Tracy Stapler. She's a chef, she's a professor, she's a nutritionist, and more. So we're gonna be welcome. We're Thank gonna you. be talking for a long time. And then I also have my other friend, actress, technology, um, maker of movies, beautician, beauty, everything. And that is Natasha Lando. She's in the newest commercial for Cars. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Good when to be I here. say beautician, I mean that you're so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. I use Elman for my beautician. Shout out to Elman. Elman. She's her beautician. We have all these people that help on the set sometimes, so we get to know all these great, great people. So thank you guys for both coming. Um, it is going to be one more show uh, at the Breakfast Club, which is Thursday. Big party. Who wants to come? Come. Bring a dish. Wear red. Four o'clock. The show is live at five. We will be packed with people. Great networking. Great everything. And we always love to have you. We have two performers. We have music. So make sure you stop down to G's in West Hempstead. You just need to send me a little text that you're coming. So, let's talk about what did you bring here? Look at this table. I wow, how did you get into the baking? Assortment. When I first met you, you did, you did not bake. Well, uh, I didn't know about it. I, oh, I've been baking for um, 40 years. But what made me switch over to professional was my niece was getting married and she was engaged in Paris. And for her bridal shower, she asked me, can you please make macarons? Mm. I love macarons. Yeah. I, I brought some macarons. Oh. But I never made macarons, but it's so hard to say no to my nieces and nephews. Oh, yes. So okay. I said, sure. And then I practiced no. and I practiced and I loved, I just loved learning new stuff. And then at her bridal shower, um, I made more than that. So the feedback was great. And I just, I just had enough people interested that I started, I started a line. Trace That's sweet. awesome. So Trace, what's it of, called? Trace of Sweetness. Trace of Sweetness. That's a great play on my name. name and you're so Trace. sweet, really. Oh, you oh. Ever since the day we met. Thank you. Which we met at the diner, right? Yes. Which is where I meet most of my clients yes. and people. I think it was in I think it was in Garden City. I don't remember though. Um, I see, I see it. I don't remember if it was Garden City. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, but um, you know how how did the family take to all this? When was the wedding? The wedding was um, last year. I can't believe it's a year already. Um, uh, no, I'm sorry. the The bride it, it was the bridal shower. Oh, was last May. Okay. So Trace of Sweetness really just took effect in July. Oh, so it's, it's pretty new. new. I it's love the picture of you new. in the hat. Thank you. Very, very nice. Yeah, my niece's husband designed that for me. Oh, how nice. Yeah, so shout out to you, Brandon. Thank you very much. Now, do they live in Long Island or are they far away? No, Long Island. Oh, that's terrific. Yes. Very nice. And um, what about, at, I know you're at the University of Delphi, where you are nutritionist. Still at Delphi. And you've been there how long? 27 years. Can you imagine? 27 years. So That's my students, when I'm teaching and I'm practicing a new recipe, they get samples. Oh, And they just have to, they have to give honest feedback, though. So that I well, especially because it's dietetic or it's not all of it. Vegan. Not all of it. So the, the vegan... 
and the gluten-free are new recipes for me. So I asked them for, to please give me honest feedback. Oh, that's um, great. Yeah, it's, it's they a probably women. love it. Yeah, I love it too. Do you have any of the students that decide they want to do this after they watch you? And um, are they getting a, a feel for it? Not the pastry part. The school's not set up for pastry, but for health and fitness. And some, you know, there is a nutrition program there. Mm -hmm. So I do have some students who, in the past, who actually became registered dietitians. Oh, that's terrific. So it's, it, teaching has always been. A um, thing, right? Teaching has always been my thing. Yeah, I know. From I remember yeah. from the first time we met. I love teaching. Yeah. Well, yeah. look at, look at how she smiles <laughs> when she says it. You know, Confucius say, do what you love. Yes. You're doing it, what'd you say, 27 years? 27 years. Yeah. That's like, you know, I'm definitely a, you know accomplishment. I appreciate it. And that. you're down the block. Well, you live in Plainview, though. Yes. Have you ever been to, have been to La Familia restaurant? Of course. Well, we know Sal. Oh, okay. Yes, and he's probably going to be on us soon. Oh, so maybe we could meet there. Yeah, yeah right? we'd love it. The yeah. lunch menu there yeah. is good. It's a, good it's a one price, you know, thing. It's in North Army Dale. I mean, Plainview. Plainview. Right. Yeah, it's walking distance And from the me. Plainview Diner closed. I know. That's terrible. I, I, I still can't believe it. Yeah, I know. It was a shock to everybody. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what they're gonna do there. Do you think it'll open up in a, as another diner? Probably, but yeah. diners are slowly. Yeah. What's happening is just like everything else, Microsoft. You know how they blend. Diner owners are now owning three diners instead oh, of one diner. So they're combining. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. My favorite diner is the Floral Park Diner because that's where I was raised. So when we go to the Floral Park Diner, it takes three hours to get out because yeah. we see everybody from grade school, you, sit in your chair. you know, mm -hmm. church, all that. And it's really nice. I like that. You know, it's like your neighborhood place. Yeah, it brings exactly. back all the memories. It's nice. And I could never buy a home there because it was too expensive. Yeah. Um, but I never really left Floral Park because I went shopping there still. And so it's really like I never moved. But then my again, husband and I got married at Floral Terrace. Oh, just right on Jericho. Yeah. Do you know that that used to be a movie theater? Yes. Yeah. It was one of the reasons I picked it, film and theater. Wow. Yes, that's funny. You were in my hometown. How it long was ago was your wedding? Let me get this right. Mm -hmm. 11 years. 11 years. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So now our dear friend here, Natasha, she plays horror. She plays beauty. She plays commercials. <laughs> What's the latest that you're doing right now? Well, it's it's been a fun year because I've had new projects in play. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, some projects that I filmed last year went live this year. So that image that you had of me tied up in oh, the chair. Oh, I know. <laughs> that was from an episodic that we filmed last year. It's called I Am Karma. And it was directed by Gio Carpio and Chris Cardona. Um, and now this year, Gio was started putting it into a film festival. So it was nominated for Best so Episodic. So that'll be a busy year for you coming up yes it's it's a busy year because this year um we well we shot house call yes. which is another horror comedy and that was directed by uh tj kiss oh and, i love him he's always here yes and you know i love to collaborate with him and oh. l man did the the zombie bite yeah and l man is coming tomorrow on uh, thursday she's coming to the show yes and she and she and i and tj we love to collaborate together and house call is the proof of concept short for the longer feature film called necromance and that and we're what going is that to about necromance. so necromance it's a teen zombie movie oh my uh, gosh. it's a tj loves horror comedy and it's, i know it's a lot does. of fun so i play the school nurse that gets eaten by the zombie <laughs> um and i get to relive being killed all over again because oh we're actually God. reshooting that scene that we use oh, for the movie it was set. amazing yes she did a phenomenal well, she, job. yes she's great Yes, she was on the show a week ago. Yes, oh, and TJ Kiss also I runs like a salad uh, restaurant in on three forty seven in Port Jeff because I go out to Port Jeff a lot. It was just there Saturday, and it's called Cabo Fresh. No, oh, right, so right, TJ's right. the manager over there. So whenever we go out there, he makes us a nice salad. It's a great guy, and he just had a second child. Yes, he had a yes. Baby. So he's he's busy, and we're, we're always coordinating schedules. But we love working together, and the full feature film should start shooting in around February. Um, and uh, I think my my murder reoccurs at around April time frame. He was saying, but it's a lot of fun. I play the school nurse, and it's a character who's the school nurse who's not really interested in nursing, and she's there to flirt with the teachers in the school, and she couldn't care less about the kids. So it's a fun role to it play. Is. I can't wait to see them. So why don't you tell um, my friend here about 
film festivals because I was telling her everybody should go to one once. Oh my God. So, so I, one of the things that I have loved about this year, actually, besides all the projects and all the interesting films was how many people I have met in the community or CJ calls it our film family. Um, and I met most of them at the film festival. So the first time I went to one, it was Nylif, uh, New York Long Island Film Festival Which last year. I, I met Valentina there. Yeah. I met so many people there. Um, and we made connections and then we started collaborating on projects later on. And now this year when I went to Nylif again, it feels like you're just seeing your you family there and making new connections as well. Yes. Yeah, a really, really great group of people. Yeah. Um, and, and it's really film festivals are, the are, yes, they're the place to showcase your films. Um, so like that um, I Am Karma episodic that was nominated for Best Episodic at the Long Island International Film Expo yes. and that's exciting. But what's more exciting is actually meeting other filmmakers and connecting and then planning out what you could do together. Yeah, and not only that, sometimes you get a role, like what happened to me. I mean, I never thought I'd be in three films. And part of my story is I got, you know, downsized. So I was in another film called um, Crooked and I did work for a crooked politician and I got a film, uh, they, they put me in the film called Crooked. And I was the good doobie in the bathroom talking to all the women saying, we're gonna get him, you know? So it's really interesting how life, you know, and we'll talk about books because, you know, my book changed my life. And I know, how many did you write? Um, three. Three books. And they're all about animals? No, no, no. The first one, um, thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ropes That Bind is a serious that topic. That I have. I started reading it, um, yes. Mm -hmm. a serious topic about overcoming the trauma of tra child sexual abuse. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. The second one um, is about um, dogs. That was a you love your dog. And you have a dog, right? I have two dogs. Two, yeah, Shout kind, out to Vina and, and Bella. Bina and Bella, I love their names. That's cute. <laughs> it's my own B and B, right? B and B, right? Um, uh, Bina is a Havanese mix, and little Bella is a um, Aussie Doodle, Australian oh. Shepherd dog, and her mother was a beautiful chocolate poodle, oh. green eyes. Wow! Mm -hmm. So they're they're amazing. Well, what are the names of the two books? Uh, the Ropes That Bind, right? Uh, my brother Javi. And I had started um, a, a third, uh, another novel, mm -hmm. um, but I got to tell you, I'm I'm stuck. It's finished, but it's being edited, and I'm stuck. So when I'm stuck, I have you to stop. I have to stop. So I needed to do something else creative, and it's just so interesting that that's when Trace of Sweetness was born. Really? See yeah. That? So mm -hmm. I haven't gone back to the writing because I am I am wonderfully overwhelmed with sure. trace of sweetness That's but i great. think people who are creative when one when you're stuck you can't not do something right you look for something else to do right because that's part of the makeup that's who you are you can't be bored you know because if you're bored you'll drive people crazy <laughs> well i would anyway. <laughs> and you, you find an outlet through your creativity yes, yes mm -hmm. absolutely well when you're stuck if you ever need to meet someone you know our publisher uh, Stephanie Larkin, I don't know if you ever heard of her. She's right in Floral Park, Red Penguin Books. Thank you. And great she connection. is a great connection. Yeah. And I met her at Butter Cookie Bakery. And I go figure, you know. Diamond Bakeries. How, yeah, that's how I met my publisher. Mm -hmm. And now I work with her because I get her clients. Mm -hmm. And I actually do one class with her, which is the first class of a three-part class. Why do you want to write a book? And I tell you why. So she has a three-part class, but I'm only in the first part because I can't do the other three. But um, we used to have events, and um, we had a few here. We had some in restaurants, and we would invite people to hear us, and they all wrote books. You know, now all the people in my book, From Fire to Freedom, all 70 women great, wrote great their book. own book. So that's it's all about just everybody helping everybody, and that's what this country this we need it i, I mean it's bad out there now natasha as an actress are you also a writer like have you dipped your toes into screenwriting uh, i have dipped my toes yes and i do enjoy it uh last year uh i had written a bunch of shorts it was right around the time when i was on the show last year and i was talking about it and i wrote a bunch of shorts with characters that i envisioned by, uh, for myself as well as uh, some characters that were cathartic so there was uh, a short that i had written 
um, about a Ukrainian refugee. I was born in Ukraine, and, and at the time when, when the war started happening, it was in all of our minds. Um, so I had written a short uh, about a Ukrainian refugee whose husband wants to move back and fight for their country, and she's saying, you can't do this because I'm pregnant and we're, we're starting a family in America. Um, I wish I had more time. That's the thing, Be because yes. you're one person. Yeah. You can't put what's in your brain into other people's brain, right? I have a, a list a mile long, but there are specific projects that I envision um, when, when I have more time. I have three kids, uh, so they keep me busy in addition to my acting and the tech. Um, but later on, there are definitely some uh, some projects I want to write. Yeah, yeah and Thank you for asking that. You know, yeah. that's also, you know, you think you could never do it. Oh, well, I never thought I could do it. And my goal in the next year or two, me and Angela Credenza, who's another great oh. actress, are going to write a short. She's wonderful. Oh, and we're going to do it. We're going to make our own little 20 minute film. That's when? Great. I don't know. Maybe a year, maybe two. But she's another lady that I met. She could be my daughter. I mean, you know, and she's everywhere. She's been on, um, you know, TV, Days of Our Lives. Once in a while, she played a doctor on General Hospital. I mean, she's an amazing girl, I young woman. I love that you, you're goal setting always has no limits no because yeah what are they gonna do you know they can tie me up and put me in the, in the cage and say you're not coming out again but um my daughter who is now 50 um she sends me you know messages all the time what are you doing what are you up to now oh, that's mom fantastic my mom also keeps so busy and yes. i'm so proud of her. i know we always talked yes. about your mom and yeah hopefully you'll be able you'll be able to send her the clip i, I will yes yeah, so, she asked for it yeah where is she so now? hi mom yes hi mom delray florida oh so she loves it there right yeah she loves it there and she's very busy so her mom your mom can have a whole party coffee everyone over for coffee and show the whole show to all her friends yeah I'm, i'll be there in january so what i think we'll do i'll bring some pastries down yes with me, oh, and then nice. we'll all sit and you'll do like that. a screening yes. Yes. we that's did wonderful. that too yes but for the screening we had one night where we had all seven episodes for the fontanas and i mean we I had about 47 people there and everyone's like you know they didn't realize yeah and even my own kids, my daughter and kids, grandkids, they were shocked because they thought I was kidding. You know, oh, yeah, grandma, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna and Google it. <laughs> when they came, they were pretty surprised. Yes. And that was a big moment. You know, your kids are the ones you want to, you know, yes, your friends, you need your friends, all the people you work with, but. You want your kids to be proud of you. Exactly. You had yes. fun? Oh, a bliss. I had a husband yeah. and he was quite handsome. <laughs> Then they killed him. <laughs> so now I'm going to be dating. Isn't that hysterical? It's exciting. Yeah. At 71, I'll be dating on, on the show. Mm -hmm. So, but um, all things, you know, said, it's everybody, every woman out there has to keep, you know, doing something. And men. But women are more powerful as far as doing it. Yeah. Men need a little push. And I do coach some men. And um, they open up when they're by themselves they don't open up to their own wives sometimes we even you know coach people looking for jobs who have gray hair I know gray hair is popular but men need to color their hair unless they can carry the gray if they can't carry the gray then I know it. a lot of men who carry the gray just so fine. do I yes, yeah yes. I do too my my dear man that I'm with he looks great but not everybody does yeah you know so we coach that way and Sometimes we even have a beauty day for people that need to go on interviews and things like that. We're not, the Breakfast Club show is for everything and nothing. So we can do anything and nothing. And it's very good for your employees. It's good for your business. It's good for life. It's good to have fun. And, um, you know, this new world of kindness right now that people are really trying to do is, I think it helps. What do you think? Yes, I, I think that I, I've been very blessed to have met a lot of people that are practicing mindfulness and there's been a right. lot more emphasis on it and what do you give back to the world, what do you give back to your community, what do you give back to society and that's certainly the way that we try to raise our kids and so I, I think every generation is always better than the prior one. I know that right now there's a lot happening in the country and in the world that uh, raises cause for concern, doesn't always feel that way but I right. would like to think that every generation well, well it all them. comes, I have to say, from the top, from the parents, with the little kids and how they're growing. And now you're, you deal with, you know, 
what middle middle age what what are your students my students uh they're in college so uh freshmen through right. seniors okay so um, how do you find I, right I'm, now i'm lucky are you blessed I'm either, I'm either lucky or i'm very naive because i love my students uh some students i i could tell i could feel they they have issues at home i could feel it but for the most part i they they chose the class to be in so most of them are trying yeah and that's a hard class nutrition you got to learn a lot don't you it, it is a lot but i i don't think there were there were only a's and b's this semester uh, I don't think I've ever failed a student. Really? Well, that's great. No, I don't. I don't heart. remember in twenty-seven mm -hmm. years. I don't ever remember failing a student. But um, I try to make it fun. For well, that. that's the main thing. You have to make it fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, do you eat a lot or no in the class? No, we don't. You we don't, don't eat anything. Uh, you don't. You just talk about the food. Uh, we vitamins, minerals. What I do, what I'm, what I'm mindful to, what makes the class most interesting is if I could make each class about them. Right. So if they're sitting there and I'm just talking about vitamins and minerals, I'm sorry, I, I'm teaching it and I'm going to find it boring. But they're, most of them are athletes. So if I mm. could get into their heads and say, well, this is how the vitamins and minerals affect your athletic performance. Oh, that's a big now thing, I'm especially going, the guys. Yes. But, but I got girls on sports teams there too. So right. but now they're going to sit back and they're going to listen because who doesn't want to feel better? Yeah. Who doesn't want to improve in some capacity? Uh, and then when I'm talking about, um, we, we talk about nutrition and pregnancy, nutrition and infancy, adolescence, that too is about them. Right. I mean, it, 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 they're them getting married and having their own families, it's not that far in the future. So I, every class I say, okay, remember, this, this is about you. How can, how can you change based on this information? Mm -hmm. And then I, I do give extra credit that whatever we're learning, if like one of the goals is having three servings of milk or milk products, so if they're lactose intolerant, it's just milk products, it could be almond milk. And in the beginning, very, very few students raise their hand that they're having three servings a day, which is the guideline. So extra credit is, okay, let's do three. Let me know you're doing three, and I'll give you extra credit for it. So hopefully by the end of the semester, they're feeling better. Well, that's fantastic. You're giving so much awareness uh, to, uh, of, of their state of health and, yeah. and looking at the big picture there. That's fantastic. I, I had great teachers, great mentors. Obviously. Well, that means a lot. Yes. Mentors make you. Yes. I mean, let's mm -hmm. face it. We have a lot of people watching. Rosemary Gridley is watching. Jenny, Susan Pinky, Bob D'Amato, Jean DiNapoli. Come to the party tomorrow. We have a party on Thursday, 4 o'clock. You're welcome if you want to come. <laughs> you came to last year's party. Rosemary Gridley, thank you for watching. I saw a photo of you and your hubby, and you look fabulous, and so does he. I hope you guys will stop by Thursday at 5. And George Buzzio, he's watching. He's got a show. Um, he's one of our, you know, hosts. He was here a few weeks ago. He has a great film. You got to look him up, George Buzzio. His film is all about the man who was the first man to do a stunt 60 years ago. It was 70. I don't know if I'm saying it right. And he created stunt stunts for the world. And now all these people are stunt. Men. And he trained them all. And there's a movie all about him. Oh, and great. his name is Kahana. If you could look it up, George Buzzio has him on his show. Kahana with a K? Yes. Okay. And then we have Ray Jackson, my friend. Thank you for watching, Ray. Sonny McCutcheon is watching. Oh, he says, Natasha is a gem. <laughs> you know him. I Ray Jackson. <laughs> Kim Kahana is the name of the movie. Kim Kahana. You gotta watch it. It's an amazing... George is going with this movie all over the United States. And I, it's a, unbelievable. He had a big screening a few weeks ago. Congratulations. Yeah, he's Congrats. terrific. And he has his own show. And I'm actually going to be on it in the new year. Oh, well, right, yeah, right, fun. George. I think I am. Right, George? And I, Greg will both be on it. I think historical films that tell the story of, of people that really contributed to the world are the most interesting for me. And I never knew that there is a whole industry out there because of this one man. And it's an unbelievable film. 
That's phenomenal. And they what came in. They came into Long Island, and you know they were on George's show, and it's an unbelievable film. And then we we also saw another one about Rocky. There's a gentleman on Long Island who has a passion for Rocky. I know and, him. Oh, you know him? I know him. Oh, he wrote a book. Yes. Yes. He's a great guy. Yes. He was on the show too. Yes. Who and is he it? had a big screening. Yeah. I. You know his name? John Messina. Yeah, John Messina. Huh? That's who it is. Yeah, you know him. Yeah. Facebook. Yeah, well, he went <laughs> three weeks ago. His whole team that were on his movie went to the steps where Rocky was. That's beautiful. And they had a great day. He really is passionate about Rocky. Oh, my God. He's unbelievable. Yeah. We went to that screening, too. And on the show, he came. The girl that does my marketing, uh, you know, visuals, she came. She went to school with him and hadn't seen him since she's seven years old. Small world. And that's what happens here. Yeah, it's different. You know, every everything happens for a reason, and um, that's really what life's about, isn't it? Well, they they do say put out what you want into the universe; it'll find a way to reach. And it. I never believed in that till I read that book. I forgot the name of it. <laughs> that book. I it, know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. It escapes me right now. Yeah, too. it's the book where you read it and you know you realize that if you put it out there, it will come back. There's a saying. Oh, I'll. Believe it when I see it. No. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. But it's really, it's the opposite. We can only see it if we believe it. Right. Mm. I believe that one thing where they say, if you build it, they'll come. Mm. I do believe that. Yeah. Because I've seen it, even with me. And it's, you know, it just happens sometimes. So, but um, does the Adelphi do anything special for the holidays as far as with the kids or um, events and they, things they like that. They have parties for the staff. Um, That's I was, nice. I was working um, in my private practice, so I couldn't get there. Um, but they posted pictures on LinkedIn. Oh, and it nice! Like a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at all the people that are watching. I love to see people. I love to see when they write in because it it's really nice. is uh, nice to see. Yeah. You know, and it's nice for the clients to see too. But we share it and share it. Of course, everyone out there, please like and share it today, tomorrow, the next day. We share it every day. And that's the nice thing for our clients. You could share it every day. It's yours now. Yes. I'm, same I'm, with you. I'm looking forward first to sharing it with my mom. That's first, right? <laughs> of course. Mom knows best, right? So the new book, you're going to go back to the new one eventually? And Oh, I, I will definitely finish it eventually when I feel the universe saying, okay, it's time to go back. Right. It's uh, all in the karma. Yeah. Yeah, right. It's true. Right now, it's uh, it's the baking. Yeah, the baking. So, yeah. how busy are you? Uh, holiday time. It's busy. I'm yes. up at four in the morning. Wow. Um, yeah. What does your kitchen look like? Um, my my kitchen is immaculate. Uh, in the why morning, am I not surprised? In the morning, but then by the end of the day, it, it and being it's it needs to be cleaned up. Yeah, but well, it's cleaned up every night. Yeah. So once again in the morning, it's immaculate. Yeah. Well, so you do you work in your butt off. I I don't look at it that way because you love it. I really do. Do you have a favorite pastry? Um, aside from the macarons that my niece Erica introduced me to, can't wait to um, taste them. Uh, can I? Sure. Can I give you some Would you mind something? getting up and no? I'm sure we have a picture of the table already up, but mm -hmm. so I'm just going. Wow, to... Wow, that's beautiful. Look at how pretty this looks. The presentation is lovely. What a presentation. Wow. Jeez. Look so at this. the rainbow cookies. Yes. Are most popular, but then I make sweaters. Oh, how cute. My grandmother used to knit me sweaters and hats just like this. So, um, and that, the sweater is made out of marzipan. Oh my goodness. So the marzipan is the rainbow cookie. So I'm just going to take one. Yes. Would you like to try one or you sure, only eat, you eat regular? And I, I eat everything. I love sweets. I'll just save it for later. This is the gluten-free so for your daughter. Mm. Thank you so um, much. So how nice. This is great. This is for you, Jameson. Wow. Tell me if you like it, Jameson. The I just started doing Oreos, chocolate-covered Oreos. Mm. So I paint on top of it. So... This oh, is um, just a flower, dark chocolate. What is Oreo. that? Like kind of white frosting? White frosting. Yeah. That's beautiful. Isn't it? I really so have lovely. fun doing that. And then the macarons are in here. This is a coconut macaron. Mm. I have that one. All yet. of these are yeah. too beautiful to eat. 
I, I, I <laughs> just so love beautiful. doing it. What is this Bon Voyage? Okay, so this is just part of the packaging. So mm. when some of my friends can go away, I give them a little thing. In this one, I'm going to tell you what it is, but let me just first ask. A lot of people like chocolate-covered raisins, Yes, right? they're delicious. My sister-in-law one day asked me, could you make me chocolate-covered prunes? I'm like, what? Uh-huh. And they're giant raisinettes. So in here are chocolate-covered oh, prunes. Oh, and that helps your stomach. But this is, <laughs> it's just, they're, they're delicious. After so, a big meal, I you have a chocolate-covered prune, you'll go to the bathroom. <laughs> so thank you for that idea, Marina. <laughs> Peanut butter cup. Oh, we love those. Uh, these are black and white, but red and white for the holiday. And sometimes I'll print. I wrote family on this how one. How nice. So, God, you see how beautiful these really are? Pretty. And we got these beautiful plates from Susan today. Thank to display you, the Susan. Bond. Thank you. Well, you're going to take one home too, Susan. We're going to share them with everyone. And of course, our great cameraman, he's uh, Justin. He's going to taste you, something. Justin. He likes a uh, Plain stuff, but I think he'll like this cookie with the sweater on it. Yeah, I brought enough, so enjoy. Yes, thank absolutely you. enjoy. And the only other thing is these I call Killy um, protein bars. Protein bars. I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro uh, a, what? a while ago, um, and so I made these look like mountains. And it's just protein and peanut butter. Really? Now, yeah. how did you get it? Now, how long ago was the Mount Killy climb? I think it had to be fifteen years ago. I and you went to. I, I loved every second of it. Yeah. Whoa. Every second of it. it. It came to me in a dream. A dream. And I asked if anyone wanted to go. And they said, no, you're crazy. Yeah, well, they and usually say that to me, too. I had to go. You did it on your own. I Well, I met a whole bunch of you, people You went with a, with a group. And I, I had to do that. And that was actually a chapter in the ropes that bind. Oh, okay. yeah, you'll get to mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I only got through a, be- a beginning. It's okay. You'll I have to read this I book now. Huh? I have to read this book now. Yes. yes. The ropes that bind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you look like you're in great shape, oh, doing you. great. Phil Verso is watching. <laughs> thank you, Phil. We have a lot of goodies here today. Look, Phil. Okay, and um, we're hoping we'll see you this week. If not, I'll see you before the holiday, Good hopefully. Day. Uh, maybe uh, I'll see you for your birthday, Phil, if you don't make it Thursday. Phil Verso is the gentleman that gets all the um, bands that play here on the weekends and other places. Yeah, he's good busy. Following. Yeah, he's all over the place, Phil. He's a great guy. He's a great dancer. And he has a great brother that left, moved to Florida. So, yeah, it's a very much of a family kind of a place here. Really, really is. So we're really talking about a lot of stuff. Well, listen, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Um, do you know, you know, a partridge in a pear tree, that whole song, do you know the partridge in a pear tree, who it is? Anybody? I just got this thing. I think it's great. The partridge in a pear tree is Jesus Christ. Oh. (laughs) Two turtle doves are the old and the new Testament. Three branch hens stand for what? Wiseman? No. Faith, hope, and love. The four calling birds, who do you think they are? Gospels. They are Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The five golden rings are recalling the Torah and the first five books of the Old Testament. Beautiful. The six geese of laying stand for six days of creation. Seven swans of simming, the sevenfold gifts of the Holy Spirit, Prophecy, serving, and teaching. I mean, it could go in any religion when you really yes. think about the way they. Ex- I got this explained. Leadership and mercy. The eight maids are the eight be- beatitudes. And um, nine ladies dancing, Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Ten lords leaping are the ten. What? Commandments. Oh, oh, I should have known that one. The 11 Pipers stand for 11 faithful disciples. 12 drummers stand for the 12 points of belief in the Apostles' Creed. Now you know. Where did you get this? I got it online. I love it. And it's really good. If you guys want it, I'll send it to you. It's it's just nice. I always try to do something with the family on Christmas Day different. 
So I'm thinking that we might do this. And sometimes we have a... Um, you could make that into a game show. Yeah, I know that. And sometimes we have a, um, a thing on Christmas Day where everybody says something, but we bring up one subject and then you say something about it and you say something about it. Because, you know, we're getting older and the kids are all older now. Yeah. There's, it's not a thousand little kids anymore. So, And that's another thing about Christmas that gets sad. And also there are so many people out there that are lonely at Christmas. And uh, depression is a big thing. You know, so um, uh, when you retire, I looked up this too. There's um, no one-stop shop that says your guide to retirement. I'm sorry, are any of us retiring? No, but um, it's out there for the people that may be a little <laughs> sad right now. Yes. You know, and there are places you can go around Christmas, and there are lots that you could do. But isolation, if you're out there and you're isolated, it's not good for you. All right, it's just as bad as smoking 15 cigarettes a day, or, you know, being lonely, it exacerbates chronic conditions. So you need to get up, get dressed, show up somewhere every day. And if you are lonely and you don't have the means to go out, go to the church because they usually have a nice meal and there's a lot of things going on on Long Island. And what you have to do is, if you don't have a computer, Google it at the library. Someone will help you. And... Uh, you have to address loneliness across your lifespan because you might be lonely at this point, but maybe you'll realize if you do something, things get better. And when you go through anything tragic, whether it be a loss, whether it be a job, a person, your house, you have to reach out to people. And now's the best time to reach out because people are worldly, goodly, yeah. you know, good to people. I mean, I, I uh, saw someone on Burger King the other day, which it touched my heart. She paid for the woman behind her's meal. So it is starting to catch on. But again, it, we had to go through all of this. You know, what do you think about that? Um, I, I think uh, you asked about kindness before and uh, it's contagious. Yes. You know, people, people it is. always, you see those... Um, the memes on Instagram, you know, be yes. kind to someone you don't know what they're going through that day. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Uh, you know, uh, there, there was uh, one film that you actually just made me think of that I, I hadn't mentioned prior. So besides all the horror and me getting, like, tied to chairs and dragged across floors and uh, punched in the face and stabbed and whatever else happened in those films, I, I also um, have done films that were... Um, a little bit more, uh, I, I would say, philosophical or psychological and soulful. Um, there was one film uh, that that I had filmed last year that went live this year. Um, it's called January Sixth, and um, it was actually a, a privilege to, to make it because uh, my alma mater is Barnard, the Women's College of Columbia University, and and I worked with their film society on this. And it was about a college student. Uh, she's a young black woman, and uh, she's feeling this intense internal loneliness that the people around her don't recognize. Um, and it's called January 6th because the events that happened during the Capitol riot, uh, they exacerbated her psychological state. They were like the icing on the cake. And, and I played this, uh, uh, this character that was just this obnoxious uh, babysitter that came into the library that, where she worked and was yet another person that ruined her day and added to the pressure cooker. And it, but the movie was... was talking about and showing about that there are, that people could be going through something internally that you just don't see on the outside there were all these people walking by her interacting with her every day and the film went between um her talking about her thoughts of what's really going on in her mind wow. that was so different than the impression that she was giving externally oh that's good that must have been very touching right yeah. yes um and um and as a little pitch, uh, it's it's streaming <laughs> as well on uh, No Budge. It's a streaming network for uh, emerging filmmakers. Oh. Um, but more, even more excitedly, I would say, because I am very big, my dream is at some point to um, be acting in films where I could showcase historical figures, women that have made an impact on oh. the world. Women and, of substance. Well, well, I think all women have substance. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, I think we all do. 
<laughs> but but women, a lot of times it's as you say, uh, like the, the man that did the stunts, nobody knew his story. Exactly. I want to tell women's stories and this uh, particular film premiered at the Athena Film Festival uh, the, and the film festival's goal is to showcase women-centered stories. That's good uh, so it was really a privilege to be part of that. But yeah, um, I was just trying to say that sometimes you don't know what a person's going through and in the film they showcase it through art of what a person's thinking on the inside but when it's you pass true. somebody by you don't really know no it's very true and you know everybody has their moments that's for sure but getting back to the horror though how did you get into it because that's so scary and the, they changing the way you look it, was it just something you were drawn to or did someone just approach you you know it just it's a very popular genre you I mean you saw at Nyla there was a whole I uh, afternoon believe block how many there was. so so there it was like uh, three and a half days four days right Nyla and there was an entire afternoon dedicated to horror um, and it is the the genre that brings in the most revenue at least in the US it brings in the most revenue it's the most popular um, and you know what even though I don't watch horror myself I get too freaked out it is a lot of fun to do behind the scenes. Oh, well, everything yeah, you that laugh a into, lot, right? I mean, but the special effects, I, there's so much respect that I have now being behind the scenes of seeing well, what goes into that. Well, because of what Elman does. Elman but changes al you. But also um, TJ, uh, so, so in that uh, short that we had done House Call, um, there were some pretty graphic scenes where where she rips a chunk off uh, the, the teen zombie rips off a chunk off my neck and stomps on my head and eats my brains. Yeah, those, and those, those are hard stuff. to take if you can't take it. You have to make all those things. Yeah, you have and then to destroy like, them. You, you have to make the and fake blood money. and the brains <laughs> and the, the something that looks like my head. And there was there's so much uh, thought. That, that went into all that. Um, and so I, I, I have a lot of respect for what goes into making a horror. But I like different genres. It doesn't have to be yeah. horror necessarily. Well, last night on TV, on I was watching, you know, cable. There was a whole show about a man who makes these funny toys and funny things. The biggest, most, you know, phenomenal thing he made that made the most money. You ready what it was for? Vomit. Oh, my God. Fake vomit. He made the most money on that thing. <laughs> And I was why I was I got interested in watching it because who would think that you know vomit would be something that you could make a lot of money on because the kids like it they you know they do it and the do do I'm like I couldn't believe it and he's a very popular man <laughs> is that there, interesting? There's probably something to um and uh, he was so not allowed <laughs> he sold his store then to that store um where you could buy so much uh, in what is it I forgot the name of it the store. They sell all kinds of uh, fun things. It's in the mall. Mm. You could go there. It's like a gag store? Yeah, 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 store. yeah, yeah. So he eventually sold his business to that store, and it's a brand. Yeah. Well, sometimes, I mean, uh, there, there's gag gifts, but then, you know, for special effects and stuff, for yeah, films. Yeah, right. Or Halloween. Right. I mean, there are all sorts of decorations that people put up yeah, for that. We had a great Halloween here. We were witches, and we actually had a real witch, but she's a good witch. She's called a, a maven or something. She came and brought us all costumes, and we all wore them. Aww. And she was explaining things about a lot of, that we didn't understand, you know. So it was kind of nice. But we always have interesting people, no matter what. It's always something different, mm -hmm, you sure. know. So look at you. You do so many different things, you know. I mean, it's amazing. And uh, we have a gentleman that just walked in. Would you like to join us for a minute till we do your part? This man is a is a wonder. I'm going on his show after this show, and we're going to be doing it here. So come up and introduce yourself. And uh, I met him through really? the film festival. Oh, okay. No, through the film festival. He comes to a, a grab a chair, hon. He comes to a lot of our events. I have two great ladies up here. Hi there. Hi. Hello. How are you? Hi, we have you? Tracy Stapler. Nice to meet you. Larry Izzo. And Natasha Comedian. Lando. Nice. I think you might know Natasha from the festivals. Maybe. Yeah, Maybe. she's an actress. Oh, she's and an actress. This, yes, and this lady is a cook. You get to taste a cookie today if oh, you're lucky. Yes. And um, she also is a nutritionist, and she works. No, you're on Delta. camera. You got to be honest. Mm, yeah. It's absolutely <laughs> delicious. And I'm Italian, so I can tell you. Of course, he's Italian, but he has red hair. Mm, well, what can I tell you? <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about you. Tell them what you do. I think it's hysterical. <laughs> I do stand-up comedy. I'm an ex-exterminator. <laughs> I used to uh, do exterminator for 35 years. I was in the you know, business. And uh, now I have a podcast called The Thrill of the Kill. We talk about anybody that's killing anything, you know. 
whether you're killing in your business, whether you're killing in pest control. Uh, and, uh, and I have a cooking show called uh, Cooking with Comics. Isn't that interesting? I, I have so many questions on the cooking show. What oh, you, go ahead. What do you cook? <laughs> He's got uh, a great personality. Well, what we do is we try to get the comics to see what they can cook, you know, and how comics, you know, view food, you know. Where's this film? Uh, it's filmed at my house. He has a studio. And what we normally do is, uh, you know, we have a comic. We ask him what he would like to cook. And then what we do is um, we have a crowd. of people. We have a little bit of an audience. And we cook. And then we eat. And you eat. And then Did we you have, have a great wine, conversation. Though? Do you have wine? We have wine. Do you have yes. dessert? He's Italian. Of course he has uh, wine. Yes. I'm not sure about dessert, you know, but yeah, we could do that. And we can have you bring your cookies if you like. Isn't that nice? See, you got a connection. See? And guess who's watching from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? Connie Aaron, my sister. Oh. My big sister. Thank you for watching, Connie. We call her Cheddar, but she's Connie to oh. everybody else. But we have the old school Italian. She's Conchetta. But we cheddar. call it cheddar, like cheddar cheese. These are very good, by the way. Really? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Look what I'm we're eating, cheddar. I, we're eating rainbow it. cookies, but they're mm. green because no, they're it's blue. Christmas. Oh, well, they look green. The, 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's blue kind of a yellow. shade of green. Yes. yes. We have all kinds of delicious uh, homemade treats. We have macaroons, candy. Ma macarons. 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 Sorry. Ma okay. Macaroons are the coconut, heavy coconut. Macarons are very light. Oh, it's I didn't realize it's the they French were pastry. They take a long time to make. Like, okay. They are my <laughs> favorite. The texture stuff. quite right. Thank you. It's difficult. Yes. Well, macaroons and uh, pignolis. Pignolis, but you know how expensive pignolis and that's all in the Oh, yeah, cookies? you can't buy them. It's like $200 like a pound. $40 for, <laughs> $40 for almost a pound of pignoli cookies now. Really? That's a lot of money yeah, for cookies. Wow. The, the nuts are very expensive. Yeah, well. Everything is very nuts, expensive. Nuts, so, so they could be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We all know about nuts, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, what's the latest on your show? Well, the latest, we just had a, a cooking show with uh, comedian Eric Tataglioni. Oh, I know him. Yeah, a great guy and a lot of fun. And uh, so that was our last show. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're scheduling other shows for the, after the first of the year. Yeah, so that's it. Everybody's off. Everybody's. Um, our last is yeah. Thursday, you know, for the holiday. I'll be here for the Yes, Christmas you're coming, show. right? Yes, I'm yeah. going to come stop in. Good. Well, we're going to have a good time. We have, uh, you know, some nice performers coming. Good. So it'll good. be good. Good. So I'm going to be on this man's show after this show. And, yes, um, she's going to be on the thrill of the kill. I am the thrill of the with kill. The Breakfast Club. Yes, yeah. she is. She's killing this. Yeah, we love it here. Three hundred really shows. Wow. Yeah, we had three hundred. Congratulations. Wow. We had a that big is, party for that. Yeah, that was fun. Not about it. It was, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. My family thinks I'm a little nutty for doing all this, but you know what? Are you now, having fun? Yes, and now that they it. see it, have they fun. like it. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta have fun. That's yeah. the name of the game. That's very true. Don't Life think is short. Did you always yeah. do it from home? Uh, yeah. Well, actually, uh, Jackie Martling. Uh, oh, I know that is name. Is a good friend of mine, and uh, we walked out of a studio one night. We were on a show together, and uh, he said, "Why don't you do it at my house?" So we had done a couple at Jokeland, and that's how Jackie, it happens. Jackie, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we had some great comedians on at Jokeland. Yeah, Land. they're funny. And Jackie's going to be on again, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get. Uh, well, we have people waiting to be on. Yeah, so Jackie, you should give me a buzz, too. Okay. Yeah, we just don't talk do a dirty doo-doo on this show. That's all. No, well, he's got a lot of clean jokes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I can tell one of his jokes that he told the other day. Can I tell that? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. A guy gives his mother-in-law a funeral plot, a burial plot for Christmas. That was a present, right? Next year, he doesn't give her anything. And she turns around, she goes, you know, you didn't give me anything this year for Christmas. He says, you didn't use the one I gave you right. <laughs> that's a Jackie joke. And that's a Jackie joke. That's a Jackie joke. And he'll be glad to tell probably a lot. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm great. sure. Great. So who's your, like one of your regulars? Is Jackie or? Uh, no, one of my regulars on the cooking show? Well, uh, there's not regulars. We try to spin it off. Richie Scotty's been on. You know oh, Richie. Rich is here all the time. He's here all the He's time. He's a Frank Sinatra uh, kind of. Ventriloquist. Yeah, he's and a, he's he does a, every imitation. Yes. And he does pretty. <laughs> He'll be here pretty, Thursday, too. Yeah. He comes on my show, and they don't know whether we're talking to Sly Stallone <laughs> or we're talking to Morgan Freeman. So yeah, he's we really freak good. people out. Oh, you had him on your show? You had Sly? Oh, yeah. And he's a DJ, too. So he's he does a lot of shows for us, too. Great guy. Big family guy, too. Yes. 
So uh, what are we going to do today? I mean, I, I have a story because I had, you we're know, gonna, mice. We're so. going to ask you for your stories. We're going to yeah. ask you if you have any bug stories. Well, I had uh, mice. You know, that yeah. you might have experienced in your life. Yeah, one or two, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. then, yeah but we'll I talk I about skied. the Breakfast Club. Of course. Of course. I'm surprised you haven't written a book yet. I'm, I'm working on it. Oh, you are. I, I really am because... You know, I had a kind of interesting life, you know, I, I went against all odds, you know, my parents and I did a one man show in Manhattan um, about this, you know, my parents wanted me to be a cop fireman, you know, get the pension and everything. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that, you know, but they were really pushing for that because they were people from the depression and sure. wanted the security. So when I went into pest control, they were like. I they probably know, were, they so were freaking sad. out, you know, yeah. until I started making money. They go, Ooh, this is pretty good. You know? mm -hmm. But, uh, how yeah. did you get into pest control? That's a very good story too. Uh, <laughs> let me finish my Brooklyn to bug story because that was the name of the one man show from Brooklyn to bugs. And B to B. Now the B to B. Yeah. <laughs> I went to how I got into it was I got married and I bought a car and I had to pay it off. So I took a part-time job as ex an exterminator on a Saturday, and the guy liked my work, and I was working for the Seven Santini Brothers at the time, not the circus act. The, the, the movers? Uh, the movers. I knew them I many years ago. Them. Yes, and I was one of their exporters. I did exporting for them, and it was a great, great building, great business. You know? Yeah, they had a lot and of they Italians. Were very nice a lot of Italians there, oh Santini God, yeah. Brothers. And then I used to, you know, on, on weekends, I used to, you know, pick up extra jobs. Uh huh. Moving, that's what I mean. <laughs> by moving, you know, people, you know. Yes. And um, so what happened was, I the guy, the gentleman that hired me, liked me, and he said, uh, "Would you like a full time job?" So I said, "Yeah, why not?" You know. So I did take the job because I started to get interested in the business, right? And first couple of houses I went to, I almost quit because there were men waiting for me to kill me. Because the exterminator before me, the gentleman that they fired to hire me, this guy was hitting on every housewife in, in, in every neighborhood. So I had a husband come down and grab me, you know, as I walked in and said, exterminator, the guy runs down, grabs me, pins me up against the wall. And his wife goes, no, no, that's not him, that's not him. Oh, so I went back to my office and I says, I quit. Unless you call every customer and tell them you ain't got this guy on the route no more. Jeez. So that's what they did. And really? I was with that gentleman for about a year. You have a message here. Taz. Hi, Taz. <laughs> the residential artist from Fox says, is that Mr. Izzo? Yes, it is. Taz, I need you Thursday. You have to call me. We have a nice show on Thursday for Christmas. So I am um, want to talk to you today, all right? Thanks, Taz. <laughs> Taz draws our guests once in a while. From her house in Seattle or wherever the heck. That's amazing. She it? is, yeah. And she it. works for Fox 5. But we got to meet her by accident somehow. And she draws myself and Greg a lot or birthday. I saw that, She drew yeah. Susan for her birthday. And she does this all from watching us. Oh, that's on great. The phone. That's amazing. Well, if you're going yes. to draw me, just take my bowl spot out, please. Yeah. That, that's a talent. <laughs> it is a talent. Yeah. And uh, we would like, she came to visit. We took her out. We had a ball. And um, we had a lot of fun with her. So, Taz, I draw for Pat Dixon now, she says. Excuse me? Pat Dixon. Pat Dixon, yes. She I was on Pat, her... I was on Pat Dixon's show, A Crime Report, several times. I was the ex-exterminator. Matter of fact, Pat Dixon had actually did my first cooking show. Really? Yes. We became friends, uh, and then I was on his show quite frequently, The New York Crime Report. Yes. And then... I, I said, I want to do a cooking show. He says, let's do it at the studio. So we did it at Kumia Studios. Oh. We did it at a green screen, which was hysterical. Because yeah. the oven disappeared right after we put something in. Oh, jeez. It just disappeared. But it was such a funny show. And then we did one with Karen Burr Green, another good comedian uh, in Manhattan. She says mutual studio. friends. Yes, mutual friends. She's a little tiny person, too. You Love never Pat. know. She's yeah. unbelievable. So call me today, okay, Tess? Thank you. But uh, when she came here, she drew us just sitting here. But most of the time, she does it from home. That's great. Which is unbelievable, Amazing. really. She's a great, great girl. So now, how do people order from you? All these great goodies you made, and how do they reach you? That's and great. you know, <laughs> thank you. Let's talk about it. Um, they could find me on Facebook. 
So Trace of Sweetness, uh, you can follow me on Facebook and uh, through Messenger or um, that, that's usually how most people are. I mean, if you Trace of Sweetness, Trace of Sweetness, or you could find me on Google and there is a link uh, with my phone number. And uh, so those are one of the two ways. Okay. Thank and you. make sure you mentioned how you saw her on the show. Yes. And how dashing she looked because this, I love this blouse. Thank you. That's how it's hard to find. Very Christmassy. Yes. Lace is in big time well, right now. I feel like Johnny Cash. Yeah. You, well, you got the black <laughs> yeah. shirt on. And how do people find out all about your, all of your great movies and films? You look films? very familiar. Yeah. You know how. She's always everywhere. Uh, Facebook, uh, which maybe we're Facebook friends. Maybe we're going to go are. check now. Um, Instagram, Natasha Landau, L-A-N-D-O-W. Follow me. And the latest movie, like the, the latest film that you're so happy about is which one? There's a few. We'll you know? say them. There, they um, could look them up. Uh well, the two in post production, I'm not supposed to advertise okay. with their with the name, so um, I will just say the yeah. the ones that are public already and out. So January sixth was the one that's on the No Budge platform, um, and House Call and Necromance, which will be filming soon. She's a horror. She's in horror. <laughs> She's in a horror. Film. Yes. In horror, yes. And I am Karma was the uh, episodic. And the January, what's it called? And January sixth. That's yes, a serious that's a No one. Budge. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was that was the serious one. There, and then the the other one ones were the names I can't say. Uh, one is where I'm going to be playing a civil rights attorney and it's kind of a parody um, where it's about a sexual harassment case but basically every player in the in the case the, the, from the lawyers to the clients have some sort of ethical blurred lines let's call them so the audience is supposed to constantly question who's telling the truth but it's very lighthearted and it's fun um, and another film that I had just shot a few weeks ago um, I, I I was a wartime refugee, so that was a very serious. That one. had to be so. Serious. So that was yes. not comic. And the next one I'm filming is uh, in in a couple of weeks in January. It's called uh, Forensic Transport, and it's an episodic uh, that's written by Michael Francis, and he has. 1200 pages of content that he wrote Jeez. for this episodic and we're filming the sizzle reel to help pitch this uh that's i think great. there are 10 or 12 episodes that he wrote so far and i'm going to be a forensic investigator <coughs> that's so look out for all those yeah you're gonna have to really learn a lot for that right forensics you should uh, see my comedy act that, i do that with yeah. my wife that does uh, she's going through menopause uh -huh. so she takes she watches forensics all night long and right? then she and then what and then she pulls samples out of my head you know? <laughs> <laughs> so you're the guinea pig. She practices on you. So maybe next time I could practice on everybody here. That'd after be great. I do that. Absolutely. <laughs> well, and guess what? I love that booked it that you all guy you guys put it on Facebook. Booked it, but you can't say what it's about. So I booked it, but I can't talk about it. Well, but I just booked it, not through Jerry Ferretti, through someone else. So yeah. that IMDb does work when you put your name up there for a film, and I got booked. Is that nice? Next year. I'm Very playing a similar kind of a lady, an Italian lady. That's all I can say. But, you know, I'm much nicer <laughs> <laughs> than the Fontana's mother. Yeah. So I said, oh, I could be nice. I am usually very nice. So Can't wait to see that. I know. Well, it's going to be a while, but I'm excited. Sure, you can. Yeah, I will. So this is for you because you are Thank a special you so lady. Much. And this Thank is you. for you. You're going to have some nice Thank smelling you. perfume on you tonight. When you go yeah, home, and uh, I don't have any perfume for you, okay. so um, unfortunately, I had a cookie. I was, yeah, was, that's right. You got cookies. That's right. So on that note, everybody, thank you for coming. Thank you. I hope thank you enjoyed you it. Having we us. loved having thank you. Thank you for having me. And of course, we always want to see you. Thank you. Thrill of the kill. Thrill of the kill. And that is a wrap. <laughs>